MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Megan Thompson here in Thompson Park and coming right up, I'll introduce you to a Butte woman who shares her experience after her dog ingested THC while she was out on a hike. And Matt, it's time to get that third cup of coffee. And at this point, yeah. <laughs> at this point, that's where we're at. And what better place to get it than maybe the Panther Park? We are going to be exploring this unique little coffee that's shop great. over in the Belgrade High School. Alrighty, it is 6.32 on this Friday edition of Montana This Morning. Jay McDonald and Matt Elwell with you. Matt, how's your Friday going so far? Uh, you know, I'm awake, I'm upright, yep. and uh, unfortunately my first cup of coffee was decaf. <sighs> I accidentally brewed a decaf. My second one, a little extra lead. Yep. We're, we're going to make that happen. Absolutely. You so, only make that mistake that's once. That's right. <laughs> Uh, dry conditions again this yeah. morning. Temperatures remain pretty cold. Uh, mm -hmm. Latest projections on El Nino. We have 54% chance of holding an El Nino uh, through, uh, and this is a historically strong El Nino, um, potentially through April. So we'll be watching that pretty carefully. And unfortunately, it also means right now we're dealing with some pretty dry conditions and warmer than average conditions for the afternoon. Daytime highs topping out into the 40s. Unfortunately, very dry forecast for us in the near term. We are tracking our snow chances. We'll talk about that and the impacts that may have coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Well, the winter opening for Yellowstone National Park is coming up just a little later this morning. And MTN's John Shear has been live in West Yellowstone all morning long on this chilly morning, waiting for those gates to open up. But John says this opening may not be so typical. Good morning, John. Well, good morning, Jane, and good morning, Matt. Uh, we'll take it from here for a few minutes, Matt, so you can sneak back into the kitchen and get that coffee. Uh, right now, I, and I just checked the uh, car thermometer, right now we have about one degree, one above, here in West Yellowstone. Uh, still much warmer, 10, maybe as much as 15 degrees warmer than a year ago on this date. The cold helps. It helps keep, keep the snow here, which is important for the winter sports activities. But still, this year, the park opening may face a little bit of a challenge because of the snow levels. So the Climate Prediction Center came out with an updated El Nino or Enzo update uh, yesterday and they're suggesting that the equatorial waters which we knew were going to be abnormally warm now they gave it a 54 percent chance of being a historical strong El Nino meaning it could be in the top five strongest El Nino since the late uh, 50s, for example. That explains our low snow totals right now. Just look at the bare ground in this video at Old Faithful. But what does it mean for the rest of the winter? Could be record low snow. And we were kind of estimating this several months ago, kind of saying, you know, this is not going to be a banner or snow year like last year. By no means. Uh, this is probably going to end up somewhere in the 50 to 70 percent range by the time we get into the end of the snow season. That's an estimate that could be higher, could be lower. Right now, the natural resources conservation sites in Yellowstone record six inches of snow at West Yellowstone, 12 inches in Canyon, and five inches at the northeast entrance near Cook City. Those totals are all 35 percent or less of the 30 year average. Farther south in the park, it gets better, with 26 inches at Sylvan Lake and no number but a rating of 98% of normal at West Thumb. At Mammoth, you can see it. No snow. Even at Mount Washburn, you can see some bare hills down below. And there's bare pavement in parking lots at Old Faithful. There may not be a lot of relief until spring. I do expect to see that this could be breaking down by the time we get into spring. And if it goes into a neutral phase, hopefully we can get a normal rainy season. And that would really be beneficial heading into the summer months. But for the snow pack, <laughs> that's probably not looking very good this year. Now, we're hoping to get an answer about whether there may or may not be any restrictions for snow travel within the park in a few minutes, maybe 10, 12 minutes or so, when we speak to uh, park ranger Rick Yaley. Jane, still a little chilly down here today, but hey, we like that here in oh. West Yellowstone for the winter sports. Absolutely. Thank you very much, John. Now you get into that car and get warm. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Again, MTN's John Shear live all morning long down in West Yellowstone. 
Now in other headlines this morning, a Butte woman is asking people who use marijuana to be more careful after she and her dog had a terrifying experience earlier this week when he ingested THC while on a hike. Megan Thompson has our story this morning. On a public trail just like this one, a Butte woman and her dogs were out enjoying a perfect day that soon turned into a nightmare after one of her animals ingested THC while out on the hike. Yeah, good boys, good boys. I came about Rocky through just checking where dogs are and who needs help. Two weeks ago, Gina coming? Evans rescued Rocky after he Go was abandoned me. by Go his go former go family. Go. He's had a rough life like any shelter dog usually and I want to give the best years possible. And what's more exciting for a dog than a walk through the woods with his owner? And I want to make sure he sees the world like Angelo and uh, my former dog Fenway. But while walking along the Continental Divide Trail near Butte, Gina's new furry family member came across a dangerous situation. More than likely he gobbled something up. It could have been an edible, it could have been powder, even ash I learned from the vet can be a very very uh, sickening to a dog. Let's go, Rocky! And upon returning home, she chopped up his lethargy to overexertion, but as time passed, he developed more symptoms. I came back to a puddle of urine throughout Rocky's bed. His head was bobbing, he was, couldn't stand up, his legs were not underneath him, and he was chattering his teeth very, very quickly. I mean, he looked like, I thought he had a seizure. I was not sure. A blood test revealed tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, in Rocky's system, which causes serious reactions in animals, but is rarely fatal. Even so, Gina had to leave Rocky overnight at the animal hospital. Go, 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 go! There's Rocky! When I left him, how he looked, I didn't know. I thought I was losing another dog, which was sad. Come on. But he's here and stoked to be out in the world, and I'm just glad to have a happy pup. And for those Let's that go, are go. involved with THC, which I'm not, please Let's be go. responsible with what you're doing out there. There's people that are taking their dogs, their kids out and about on our trails. We don't need it hanging out on our trails. All right, thank you very much, Megan, for that story. Now, a little closer to home before they hit the books, a crew of Belgrade High School students have some coffee grinding to do. MTN's Jolie Silly survived the morning rush and found out how a student-run coffee shop is giving students a chance to enhance their job skills. Belgrade High School students are up bright and early helping their school perk up. But they're brewing up way more than just coffee. They're also brewing up valuable life lessons. Good morning! I'm not an early riser. <laughs> Chloe Bajukas may not be a morning person, but she's here every day with a smile at 7.30 a.m. as she serves coffee to teachers and her peers at the Panther Perk, a student-run coffee shop located right here in the high school. It's a rewarding job, she says. Handing out coffee and then just seeing their smile, like just seeing their face light up when they get it. We learn how to steam milk, how to like make like different types of coffees, so it's pretty nice. But aside from learning how to make a great latte, Chloe and her coworkers are also learning critical job skills. It's amazing even in the couple of months we've just been open, how much they've all grown. Formal Americano. The Panther Perk opened up in September, an idea that popped into the minds of Belgrade High School teachers Melanie Young and Jessica West DeJarnett over the summer to open up a coffee shop in the school and staff it with a combination of special needs students and pro start culinary club students. They've really learned a lot with that base skill set and then just the customer service, but in a little, maybe more approachable way for them that it doesn't feel as nerve wracking as being in a business in the community. And they're even getting paid. They're at $15 an hour. The Panther Perk is funded by a pre employment transitions work grant, which provides job training and self advocacy skills to the student population with disabilities. It's a good, good transition for a lot of them. What made you guys pick Chloe for the interview? I was cleaning a classroom with her over the summer and I said something about wanting to open the coffee shop. She was like, oh, I'll work there. And I've spent time with her and I was like, done, you're hired. You're our first hire. Congratulations. So it's been really fun to watch her kind of blossom too and get, gain more confidence. And, mm -hmm. um, she draws a lot of students in. <laughs> 
in Belgrade, Joe Lisa Lee, MTN News. Amazing skills being learned there. I just love that story. Thank you very much, Jolie. Now, we're going to take a short break here on Montana this morning, but when we come back, Matt's going to have a look at that forecast. MTN's John Shear has been live all morning long down in West Yellowstone, and we have all your top stories. All that coming up. Tonight